Believing that you're destined for heaven when you're not would be the most tragic self-deception. David Servant's book, The Great Gospel Deception, will help you be sure that heaven will be your eternal home. Order your copy at heavenward.tv. Okay, it's always good to be together. Let's continue looking at Matthew chapter 24, uh, the Olivet Discourse. And um, a couple of sticky parts, well, actually a lot of sticky parts in this Olivet Discourse, things that, you know, have me mystified, but I'm just thankful for what we can piece together, what we do understand. And I believe that as we get closer to the end, some of these things will become even more clear, at least to those who are living at that time. Maybe you and I will be among them. We're going to look in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 34, a verse that uh, causes us to scratch our heads a little bit. Uh, Truly I say to you, Jesus says, this uh, generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Now, that's a verse that's used by those who would fall into the category of preterist or partial preterist, those who believe that all or most of the Olivet Discourse uh, was fulfilled by 70 AD. And even the, even the part about Jesus coming back, a lot of times they'll try to fit that into uh, an idea that uh, Jesus came back in wrath and not physically, and he sent his wrath upon Jerusalem, and so that's how he came back. But I don't know. I just can't buy into that. Um, in, in any case... You know, Jesus was speaking to at least four of his closest disciples as he said these things, and naturally they would have interpreted what he said there, what we just read in verse 34, as, oh, this generation, that's our generation right here, and so this is going to be taking place within our generation. That's what they would, I think, how they would have interpreted that. And so based on that, then those who believe all this was fulfilled by 70 AD will say, well, there you have it. There's one more proof. Well, again, to me, you know, you have to put all these things in the balances. And, uh, you know, why would we want to, and and I I hope you understand this expression, why would we want to uh, murder scores of scriptures to save one? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, we've read all these other scriptures that are clearly end time scriptures uh, by their own language, by their immediate context, and by the greater context of the Bible. So why would we want to undo that just by taking this one verse and saying, well, see, there's the verse. Why does that become the all-important, all-encompassing verse upon which every other verse is judged? Why not reverse it around and say, wait a second, and we put these in the balances and we've got all these verses that make it clear that this is yet to come stuff, and we got this one one verse that seems to go against that. So what does that do? It, you know, it doesn't tip the scales in its favor. It just weights it a little bit. But still, we have all this evidence on this side. You, you follow what I'm saying? And so how do you make it harmonize? Well, there's various ways that people try to harmonize that with what I've been teaching, that perhaps Jesus was referring to the generation that begins to see these things that he's talking about, like, for example, the, the rise of the Antichrist. That generation will see the end, and they'll see Jesus come back. Well, You know, a lot of folks say that's, you know, just a matter of a few years. Uh, So I can agree with that. Some folks have said that uh, the word that's translated generation could also be translated race, and then therefore a reference to the fact that the Jewish race, uh, you know, will not pass away until all these things take place. Or some even go so far as say, you know, the race of the new creations, the Christians, the believers, you know, they're not going to pass away um, until all these things take place. Uh, kind of indicating that although many will be martyred, there'll still be some a remnant who will be saved and make it through uh, that terrible time of tribulation. Okay, I don't know which one's right, but I'm sticking to my story. Okay, I'm sticking to my guns on this. Uh, I'm not going to let that one verse uh, supersede everything else that we've read and base my theology on that one verse. Okay, so if you don't agree with me, I still love you. Okay, hope you still love me too. This is not worth dividing over. Um, You know, this is not that important. Now, here's a great verse. Verse number 36. Jesus says, and if there's one verse... I might add, that is often taken out of its context and and then stripped of its obvious true meaning when it's in context, this is the verse. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father 
alone. And so it is said, well, see, that's why the rapture has to take place before, um, you know, the, the, the end time of the Antichrist and the, the sun going dark and the moon going dark and so forth. Because if, if that was the case, then, you know, we would know when Jesus is going to come back because, you know, it happens in the Bible right after those things. So, so you know, how could Jesus say that unless the rapture, you know, was going to happen, you know, without any preceding sign? Well, that's, I think, so silly to say that. And I just wonder about people that do say that, if they've ever read it within its context. Because, uh, first of all, when Jesus says, of that day and hour, what event is he talking about? He's talking about his coming back and the the the, 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 the catching away, the rescue uh, of the saints. And so that's the, the, the subject. And so, you know, he's not saying you'll have no idea whatsoever and it'll catch you completely by surprise because it could happen just at any time at all. There's no pre-warning. That's not what he's saying because that's not what he said. He's just given them all kinds of signs that, that, that will help them to know. He himself said it. When you see these things, know that he's near right at the door. So he wants them to be ready right up until the last time, anticipating, oh my goodness, it could be any moment now because the sun just went dark, the moon went dark, the you know stars are falling from the sky, the powers of the heaven are, are shaken, there's the sign of the Son of Man, oh my goodness, this is it, this is it. Does anyone know the day or the hour? In, in, in two senses, no. Even those people who are alive at that time, and maybe it'll be you and me, they won't know the day or the hour, but they'll sure know the month, I would think, based upon all these signs. And from the reference point of when he was saying it, you know, it was still, you know, obviously many years away. All right? And so nobody knows, I can't pinpoint the year right now, but when I see these signs, I'm going to know something. You will too, okay? Out of time. Can't wait till next time. See you then. God bless you. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.